I'm a physiotherapist and lymphedema therapist. The purpose of this short instructional presentation is to demonstrate how to perform arm circumference measurements for patients with risk for cancer-related lymphedema. This forms part of the screening and monitoring for these patients, as outlined in the Primary Health Network Lymphedema Care Pathway. The circumference measurement process follows the Australasian Lymphology Association measuring standards. These standards and the recording form used in this demonstration are contained within the Primary Health Network Care Pathway and can also be found on the Australasian Lymphology Association website. The measuring standards outline a consistent way to measure a patient's arm from one visit to the next. To ensure accurate and reproducible marking of the arm, the use of a limb measuring board is recommended. This Jopst measuring board, featured in the Australasian Lymphology Association measuring standards, is no longer available for purchase. The board shown in this presentation is available from Creative Perspex in Caboolture. Medi Australia also sells measuring boards. I will demonstrate the measuring with a measuring board initially and without the use of a board later in the presentation. To measure the arm, the patient should be seated with their arm abducted to 90 degrees and resting on the board which is on a flat surface. Mark this or any variation on the arm measurement form. It is recommended to measure the at-risk arm first. When you measure the unaffected arm later, use the same position as for the affected arm. Allow a space, the width of two to three fingers, between the end of the board and the patient's trunk. Note the level of the tip of the third finger on the board and note this on the arm measurement form. For ease, use an easy mark, for example, five centimetres or 10 centimetres on the board. When marking the arm, Use a set square to ensure vertical alignment. Mark the skin with a pen on the distal side of the set square. These points will be used to measure the limb circumference later. To find the metacarpophalangeal joints, feel for the joint line with the hand flat on the board. Mark the hand on the radial or thumb side and on the ulnar side at the metacarpophalangeal joints. Record these positions on the board on the arm measurement form. Feel for the ulnar styloid process at the wrist and mark the midpoint. This is the zero centimetre point for reference. Record the position on the board on the arm measurement form. In this case, it is 24.5 centimetres. With the wrist as our zero point, mark the arm on the ulnar side at 10 centimetre intervals. For example, 10 centimetres, 20 centimetres, 30 centimetres and 40 centimetres from the ulnar styloid process. Repeat on the radial or thumb side of the arm. Again, using the same zero point, in this case being 24.5 centimetres on the board. To measure the arm, place the measuring tape distal to the marks on the skin. Read the circumference measurement from the proximal edge of the tape measure. Record the circumference at the relevant location on the arm, on the arm measurement form. Fingers should be measured distal to the web space with a small, narrow measuring tape if possible to allow more accurate results. These tapes are available from garment suppliers. If you do not have access to a measuring board, you can apply the principles already shown to achieve a reproducible limb position. For example, secure two tape measures parallel to each other on a height adjustable plinth. Use the tape measures in a similar way to the measuring board to position and mark the arm as we have described earlier. Or you could do similar with laminated graph paper as example. Measure the unaffected arm in the same way. Comparison can then be made between circumference measurements of the at-risk and the unaffected arms at each of the measuring points. If a patient's weight is stable, it is reasonable at future reviews to only measure the at-risk arm. Compare the measurements at that visit with any available previous measurements. For future measurements, Position the arm as per the board levels on the arm recording sheet and mark the arm in the same way as we've done today. Thank you for watching this short presentation. I hope you have found it valuable in assisting you to measure the arms of patients with risk for cancer-related lymphedema.